Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at the iter tools package from the Python standard library. Iter tools is a collection of functions in Python that we can use to handle iterables. Uh, iterables are simply uh, data structures that can be iterated over. So, so data structures that, that that basically have a list of elements in them. So things like uh, lists and tuples uh, and dictionaries. Now, iter tools, they are especially useful uh, in cases where we have a stream of data or where we have a very, very large data set because they have something called lazy evaluation, which means that elements are not computed all at once. Uh, so we don't have the entire data structure in memory at once, but they're computed on the fly as we as we request for them. Um, in addition to that, iter tools also, um, and, and this uh, this helps with like uh, with, with keeping the memory footprint, uh, footprint down uh, in certain applications. And in addition to this, uh, it also helps. It also help make make our code uh, a lot cleaner and nicer to look at. So the first thing we'll be looking at is the Cartesian product. So I have a list of colors and sizes, and I will just say uh, I'll just say product, and then give the two lists like that, uh, and then I will print. Uh, and as you can see, it returns an iter tools object. Um, this is not really what we want, so we need to wrap this in a list um, to show uh, to see the the elements. Um, yeah, and th and this basically just gives us um, the the Cartesian product, right? So we have red paired with small, red paired with medium, red paired with large, and so on for each of them. Um, in addition to this, we have a function called permutations uh, and this gives us the number of ways to uh, we can arrange uh, a list of elements uh, so if we have some items here uh, let's say a b and c like that then this would give us all the different ways um, that we can uh, arrange these elements like that. So ABC, ACB, and so on. We can also change the, so this is the length of the, of the permutation. So if we change this to two, it would, it would give us all the different ways that we can, we can uh, uh, arrange two of the elements uh, in this list, right? So we have A and B, we have A and C, B and A, B and C, C and A. And notice here that the order doesn't matter in a permutation. So you can have A and C and C and A, and these are considered to be two distinct uh, sets of elements. Um, something closely related to permutations is something called combinations, which is simply uh, the number of ways you can choose uh, um, elements from a list. So this would be with R2 would be the number of ways we can choose two elements uh, from this list of three elements. Uh, and in this case, the order matters, uh, which means that A and B would be the same as B and A. So it would only be shown like once um, in, the, in, in the resulting combination. So you have A and B, but you don't have B and A, right? So A, B, A, C, and B, C. Next, we have something called group by, um, which is a way to group elements. So like that. Um, and what this does is, so it also has like a key argument, uh, which is basically the function that you use for computing the group categories, the way that you're going to group elements. If we don't give it any key, it just, it, it, it just assumes that the element uh, itself is a key. So in this case, um, it would it would group the elements uh, based on based on the value of the element. So if we print the key uh, and the group, then we would just get um, so we would get one and one uh, in one uh, group, two two and two in another group, and so on. So we have two ones there as a one group, and then we have the twos as another group, the three as a as a group of its own, and then uh, four and four as um, as their own group and five as a, as, a, as its own group. And as you can see, the key here is just the the element uh, uh, type uh, or, or the value of the element, right? We can also have something a bit more complicated. Um, so let's say you can have. So if you have a list of students, um, where we have or maybe like that. Uh, so we have the name. Um, Alice. Oh, and then if we have also um, an age here like that, um, and then we can just do the same thing. We have maybe Bob with an age of thirty-nine, 
and Charlie with an age of 30 like that very simple um, then we can group by and if you say students here um, and then if you say key is equal to uh, so here we can do something so we can use so we need to basically give it a function uh, that it can use as a discriminator to create the groups uh, so we use something called a lambda function here um, and here so we basically just give it um, so, it's, so, so it's going to run this, this so it's basically just a function uh, where it takes the element and then we just say, uh, ask it to, to, to group um, these, these elements uh, according to the, to the ages. So we want basically Ellis and Charlie to be in the same group and Bob to be in a group of his own, uh, like that. And this should then give us the right, yeah, okay. So something here very interesting, yeah. So this, so, this, so the problem here is that we need we need to actually sort uh, the elements. So something like that. Uh, so if we run this again, oh, uh, then it would uh, it would actually sort uh, or 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 group these um, on the right uh, in the right way. Yeah, cool. So yeah, and if you're if you're wondering, I think I'll just just for completion's sake, maybe just show also um, a way to uh, to sort these. So we can also we can do something very similar here and use a lambda function uh, so that it sorts on the age, um, and this should then give us the same. Yeah, it gives the same result. Okay, so a couple of other functions we have the count, uh, which is kind of like a um, uh, kind of like a for loop uh, where you just give it um, the, the starting element so here it's like a for loop that will begin at, at element zero and it'll just continue forever um, and that's basically what makes it different from a for loop is that it's infinite uh, so we need to break it at some point right so I'll just to illustrate I'll just say via 10 uh, then we break uh, and then just print the value here like that, and this should then print zero to 10. Uh, we also have something called uh, a cycle. Um, so if we say, and this is actually very useful uh, in certain cases. Um, so if you say for I in cycle items, then it's going to, uh, this also runs actually, uh, infinitely but it's going to cycle through so it doesn't um so basically so basically it just repeats um from the the entire list so so once it reaches the last element it'll go back and loop back uh to the first element so it prints a b c and a b c infinitely uh like that as you can see i'll stop this before it crashes okay right uh next we have something called repeat which is also very interesting uh, so repeat and this repeats a certain element uh, a number of times so say you want to just have this print this a four times it's going to print it four times we have also something called um, drop while and here we again so we start with a lambda function and um, like that and then we give it the numbers and so this will, so it will return the iterator uh, once the, once this predicate, once it returns false. So in this case, um, we, we want to basically remove all the negative elements. We want only the positive elements in the list. And, uh, and this is what it's going to do. So I'll just say res like that. Um, and then I will just print the list like that. And as you can see, it takes um, the positive numbers um, out. Um, from this. Um, we also have the opposite of this called take while, which just has the opposite function. So in this case, it's going to take the negative numbers out and keep the positive ones. So here we have the negative numbers. Again, this is like a very nice way to, to yeah, so if you have like a, like a predicate here, it's a very nice way to sort of filter elements. Um, and obviously, this is, this, is, this is an example with numbers, you can also have, you know, all those sort of things here. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you learned something useful and stay tuned for the next one.